As graphic designers, we all spend a lot of time working and fiddling around with type. Whether you are a massive typography geek or not, you must learn to work with text efficiently. In this video, I will share 20 essential shortcuts and techniques with you that will make you type and format text like a pro. So I have this spread here, which I created specifically for this tutorial. And I'm going to zoom a little bit closer so you can see exactly what I'm doing. By the way, I will be switching back and forth between layout or normal and print view. So that's the W keyboard shortcut in InDesign. And most of the time I'm going to spend in InDesign because this is the application that has the most typographic keyboard shortcuts, even though most of them will also apply to Photoshop and Illustrator. So now that we zoom closer, I just double click first of all to get into editing the type. So whatever tool you have, like the selection tool, if you just double click on the text frame, you get into editing the type. And then the first shortcut I like to use in most applications is the jump between words, which would be command left and right arrows. So that's very handy. And with this, you can very quickly get to the next word in your copy. So it's much faster than pressing and holding down just simply the left and right arrows or switching to the mouse and then clicking. These shortcuts are especially useful when you are typing because you don't have to let go the keyboard. You can just do everything without touching the mouse. Now, if you want to also select words while jumping between them, just hold down also the shift key. So command shift left and right arrows will be able to select in whichever direction you want by words. So each time I press the arrows while holding down command and shift, I can select words ahead or behind the position of the cursor. Similarly to this, you can also jump to the end or the beginning of your currently selected line. There's the end and the home buttons. So you can see my cursor jumping from one end to the other. And once again, if you hold down the shift key, you can do the same thing. So for example, if I put my cursor here in the middle, I can use shift end key to select the second half of the line or go back there and use shift home key to select the first part of it. If you use shift up and down arrows, you can quickly select full lines going either down or up. And if you want to jump to the beginning of a paragraph, use command up and down arrows. You can see how the cursor is jumping between these three paragraphs now. So it's a little bit more visible what's happening there. And similarly to before, if you hold down the shift key together with this, so command shift up and down arrows, you can very quickly select full paragraphs or deselect them. So the shortcut works back and forth. Now, of course, you can also select all text within a frame. That would be command A. Or if you want to quickly deselect all of it, that's command shift A. You might prefer to use the mouse, even though this tutorial is about keyboard shortcuts. There's actually a couple of things you can do with the mouse, which can help you to select text quickly. So double clicking would select a word. Triple click will select a line. Quadruple click, so four times clicking, selects a paragraph. And if you're crazy about clicking, you can also click five times in a row to select all the text within text frame or the whole story. So one, two, three, four, five. And that will select the whole story. Now it is worth mentioning that for InDesign, you actually have a separate story editor or text editor. And that's again, a useful shortcut. So whenever you are working with text, let's say I have a word selected here. If I press command Y, it opens up the story editor. And not only that, but it also keeps my selection visible. Similarly, if I select something here and press command Y again, it jumps back to my layout view and keeps the selection there once more. The cool thing about the story editor is that it will even be able to show you the overset text. So here you can see, I just reduced the size of my frame. If I now press command Y, I can see not only the text that's currently visible in layout view, but also the text that's overset. So it's indicated here at the bottom with this red outline. In layout view, you only see the little red cross at the bottom right corner, which is called the output point of your text frame. 
Another handy shortcut, if you quickly want to see all the text, just double click at the bottom center point of your frame. And voila, it came back. So now that we covered the basic shortcuts for navigating and selecting text, let's move on to formatting text. Now the first one and one of the most obvious ones is to change the style of your text. So this font, for example, Montserrat, supports lots of different variations. Now currently you can see that I'm using semi-bold, but to quickly reset it back to regular, and that's one of my favorite shortcuts, is Command Shift Y. So that's whatever font you have will always set back to regular. So clears any additional formatting. If you want to add, let's say bold, just use command shift B. Command shift I would be italic, which also preserves the original bold. So now you are adding these additional formatting. So this is bold italic. If you want to also add underline, that would be command shift U. So now we have three additional formatting on top of the original regular style. And once again, if I use command shift Y, it resets everything and just keeps the original regular formatting. Similarly to these shortcuts, you will also have to hold down command shift, but use other keys to change the alignment. So let's say in this paragraph, I currently have left align or flush left. If I want to change it to right, I would use command shift R. So command shift L would be left, R would be right, C would be center and J would be justified. Now, if you have a little bit less text, I'm just going to delete slightly from this text here. You can see even when you justify the last line normally is kept left aligned. So that's when you use command shift J, this is how it looks. But if you use command shift F, that will force the last line also to be fully justified. So command shift J, command shift F. And then if I want to go back to flush left, it's again command shift L. Now, of course, you can also change the font quickly with a shortcut. And in InDesign, that would be command six. So one thing's worth mentioning with this shortcut, and you probably noticed that the control bar on the top appears. And by default, this is hidden away since the latest update in CC 2019. And mainly because the properties panel here on the right was introduced. And it serves pretty much the same purpose as the control bar, but in a little bit more refined way. So if you don't want to see the control bar, I don't advise to use this shortcut because it will keep bringing it up and you can't just get rid of it with a shortcut. You have to actually go to the window menu and turn off control. But if you prefer to have the control bar open, feel free to use command six to quickly select the font selector on the left. And then you can just start typing the name of a font. Let's say Bebas. I just start typing that. And then I choose maybe the regular. And there you go. We quickly change the font. Now, once again, if I have it selected, I can just press command six, type uh, the same font that we had, Montserrat, and I will just select bold. So again, it's up to you whether you prefer to have the control bar open or not. I am going to keep it closed and just simply use the properties panel on the right. Hopefully this shortcut in the future will be updated to work with the properties panel as well. Now let's move on to something very important and that's to change the size of the font or the text that you select. So for example, here I'm going to select the main uh, word or title traveling and I'm going to just double click on the word to select it. Now to change the size it's command shift and then the less than greater than signs or full stop and comma. I prefer to remember it as less than greater than signs because that's how I'm changing the size so it's getting smaller or bigger. This is really useful because you can very quickly change the text size on your current selection without changing the text frame but if you want to make this faster you can also add the option key and then it will go much faster so it's a higher increment that you're using I think it's doing it five times faster so let's just see once again when I'm by default using the shortcut it goes two points at a time if I hold down the alt key it goes 10 points at a time. But if you want to change the increment, you can go to the preferences in InDesign and here under units and increments, you can actually specify the shortcut 
So whenever you use this decrease or increase size shortcuts, this is the increment that will be used. So the default is two points, but you can set it to whatever you want. And the same setting will also be applied to changing leading, which I'm going to show you in a second. But while we are here, you can see there's a couple of additional things that you can specify. So if you're planning to use more shortcuts to work with type, I highly recommend to check these settings out. So to move on, let's talk about a couple of shortcuts to change the case of your text. Now, this will only work if you have the original text written with lowercase or center case. If you forced typed with caps lock on, for example, like this text here, it's not going to work. So you have to make sure you type in normally. And then that text, you will be able to set to all caps, for example, by using command shift K. And the same shortcut will work back and forth. So you can switch to lowercase or sentence case. So for example, like that, again, I can switch back and forth between uh, by using command shift K. It works in Photoshop as well. Unfortunately, the same shortcut by default doesn't work in Illustrator, but you can customize the shortcuts and then it will also be universal and you can use it in all of these applications. If you ever need to customize shortcuts, you will find that under the edit menu, keyboard shortcuts. So all the Adobe applications has this feature and you can fully customize everything. Now, similarly to all caps, you can also use small caps. That's command shift H. And you can see the difference between a normal cap and a small cap character. And again, it's a toggle, so you can switch back and forth. Again, Command Shift H is the shortcut. Then with Command Shift plus sign, you can turn your text into superscript or Command Option Shift plus, you can turn it into a subscript. So when is that useful? For example, if you want to add an index number, you just select it and then command shift plus sign. Another handy shortcut to remember is check spelling. So for example, here I have a word that I spelled wrong intentionally. By the way, the rest of the text is just using the placeholder copy. So don't try to read it. It doesn't really make much sense. But if I use command I, I can quickly get the check spelling option for the selected text. It can be a single word or it can be also a full text frame. But in this case, I can see already the suggested corrections. So journey, that's what I wanted to use. So I can just say change and you can see it's updated. And now I can just say done. So that's a very quick and useful way of checking your spelling while you are working in these applications. And that's what we had time for in this first video. So these were more like basic shortcuts. In the next part, I'm going to cover more advanced shortcut techniques, again, for working with type. And if you want to learn more in general about InDesign, Illustrator and Photoshop, I highly recommend to check out our master classes where I go into way more detail in everything, not just on type, but pretty much everything else that matters if you want to work professionally and efficiently with these Adobe applications. Let us know in the comment section what would you like us to cover next time on this series. Click on the link in the description or the join button to become a member if you want to work on future projects with us and see the whole design or illustration process live. Thanks a lot for watching, like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.